uh, maybe we should uh, compare that with a, uh, a couple uh, previous examples. Uh, I guess what we're seeing here is that um, the, one of the hard parts of arrow pushing is knowing how to interpret the head of the arrow. Um, it's really quite easy, I think, to interpret the tail of the arrow. Let, let's look at all the tails we've seen so far, and we'll see how easy it is to interpret them. How do we interpret the tail of this arrow? Well, this tells us that x is losing its lone pair. I think that's pretty clear. How do we interpret the tail of this arrow? Well, this also tells us that x is losing its lone pair. I think that's pretty clear. How do we interpret the tail of um, this arrow? Well, it tells us that x is losing its bond with y. And that's what happened. x lost its bond with y. And how do we interpret the tail of this arrow? Well, this also tells us that x is losing its bond with y. And that, again, is what happened. x did lose its bond with y. It's possible that x might gain a new bond with a new atom z, but x is definitely losing its bond with y here. And just to give you one more uh, example that we talked about briefly before, what does the tail of this arrow indicate? Uh, this is a little bit trickier, but I think it's clear now that we know that the convention is that when the tail of the arrow is coming from a negative charge, that again really means that the negative charge is representing a lone pair. The tail of the arrow is really coming from a lone pair. So again, this arrow again indicates that x is losing a lone pair. Again, this would indicate that x is losing a lone pair. We've even been drawing those in. And we can see here that x really did lose that lone pair, the lone pair that it had in the starting material it doesn't have in the product anymore. So uh, again, the, the moral here is it's really pretty easy, I think, to interpret what the tail of an arrow means. It is a little trickier to interpret what the head of the arrow means. Um, because um, obviously if the head of an arrow is pointing to an atom, that means that that atom is going to be gaining more possession of those electrons. But it's maybe not clear sometimes whether the atom is going to be gaining possession of the electrons as a, uh, by sharing them in a bond or by owning them in a lone pair. Sometimes the head of the arrow indicates that we're forming a bond, and sometimes the head of the arrow indicates that we're forming uh, a lone pair. So the head of the arrow can be a little bit amb uh, ambiguous, or actually I shouldn't say the head of the arrow isn't ambiguous, but it takes a little bit more work to interpret it. So let's go through our examples and see how we can use the thought process we've discussed to interpret them. So here we have an example where the head of the arrow is on the Y. So the Y is going to be gaining more possession of the electrons. But is it going to gain possession of them by sharing them in a bond or by owning them in a lone pair? Well, let's go through our thought process. What does Y look like in the starting materials? In the starting materials here, Y completely lacks any possession of this pair of electrons. In the starting materials, Y lacks this pair of electrons. So if it's going to be gaining more possession, it must end up sharing them in a bond. And that's what happened here. X started with a lack of possession of the electrons, and it ended up sharing them in the bond. Now this arrow, I think, is quite straightforward. We don't need to talk about this very much. I think it's very clear that when the head of the arrow is pointing to the bond region, that that indicates we're forming a new bond. So uh, that's straightforward. The tricky case is when the head of the arrow is pointing directly at the atom. So let's go to the next case here where the head of the arrow is pointing directly at this x atom. Let's go through our thought process again. We can see here that x is beginning by sharing this pair of electrons. In the starting materials now, x is sharing the pair of electrons in a bond. x is sharing the pair of electrons in a bond. And since the head of the arrow t tells us that x is gaining more possession of the electrons, well, if it started sharing them, the only way to gain more possession of them is to end up owning them. So in this case, x ended up owning the electrons in a uh, lone pair. So it would be a really good idea to compare our first example and our third example here. Because in both cases, the head of the arrow was pointing at an atom. But in one case, the head indicated we were forming a new bond. And in this case, the head of the arrow indicated we were forming a lone pair. Well, now we have the thought process that allows us to distinguish between these. In this case, x started by lacking any possession of the electrons. So to gain more possession means it ends up sharing them in a bond. But in this case, x started, up, x started already sharing the electrons. x was already sharing the electrons in a bond. So in order for x to gain more possession of the electrons, it has to end up completely owning them in this lone pair. And then we applied the same thought proce process to our fourth example here. <clears throat> here again, we have the head of the arrow pointing to the z. 
Well, as we've been discussing, Z began completely lacking the electrons. Z began with a lack of any possession of the pair of electrons. So since the head of the arrow is pointing to the Z, the way for Z to get more possession of the electrons is to go from lacking them to sharing them in a bond. And that's what happened in our two cases here. X went, uh, began sharing the electrons in the bond. Okay, so again, you have to be a little more careful interpreting the head of an arrow than the tail. In particular, you have to be a little careful interpreting when the head of the arrow is pointing directly at an atom. It's easy to interpret the head of an arrow pointing at a bond. That just means we're forming a new pi bond. It's a little bit tricky to interpret the head of an arrow pointing directly at an atom. However, if that atom uh, previously lacked any possession of the electrons, then the head of the arrow indicates that the uh, atom is going to be now sharing the electrons in the bond. Whereas if the head of the, uh, whereas if the atom had previously been sharing the electrons in a bond, then the head of the arrow indicates that, that atom is now going to completely own the atoms in a lone pair. Okay, so that was one of the issues that might have we might have found confusing in the bond to sigma bond transition. Uh, but the other issue that obviously jumps out at you is that, they, that we actually weren't quite sure what the products were here. There were two separate products, and I said that we really can't tell so far which is the correct products. Uh, in this case, uh, the arrow really is ambiguous. We can't tell whether Z is forming a bond with X or whether Z is forming a bond with Y. I'm going to erase all these notes about sharing and lacking and owning now, just for the sake of clarity. So here it was clear that we were going to erase the bond between X and Y. And then one of those was going to form a new bond with Z. But was it X that was going to form the bond with Z or Y that was going to form the bond with Z? Well, based on the information I've given you, you can't tell. So this really is, uh, I guess you could say, a deficiency in the curved arrow notation. This is a problem with the curved arrow notation. The organic chemists have kind of messed up uh, this part of their notation because they've left in an ambiguity. So how do you figure out which is correct? Um, well, uh, there's two ways, neither of which we're going to talk about much more right now. Um, first of all, sometimes it is clear from um, the other uh, details of the problem wh uh, who the new bond is going to be formed with. Sometimes uh, there really is only one possibility for who you're going to form uh, the new bond with. Uh, I'm not going to show you any examples of that now. We'll get to that later in the series of videos. Later I'll show you some examples of what I mean by that, so don't worry if that uh, comment seemed a little bit cryptic. Uh, and also, um, sometimes you're supposed to uh, figure out uh, who the, you're going to be forming the new bond with just with your knowledge of the mechanism that you're working with, or just with your knowledge of um, some uh, uh, features of organic chemistry. So sometimes we can use our organic chemistry knowledge or our specific mechanism knowledge to figure out who the new bond is going to be formed with. Uh, and again, I'm not going to give you any examples of that uh, right now. In fact, I'm probably not going to talk about that too much more for the whole rest of the series of videos, because my goal in the series of videos is not really to go over organic chemistry in general or specific mechanisms. Um, I just want to go over what you can figure out just from the electron pushing arrows. My goal in this series of videos is just to cover what you can figure out just by go, going over the electron pushing arrows. Uh, so I have to admit that sometimes uh, this type of electron pushing arrow you can't figure out as much as you would like. You can't figure out which of two possible products you would get. Sometimes you can figure it out, um, and again, we'll, we'll come back to this later in the video. So if, if a, a couple of the things that I just said seemed a little bit cryptic or mysterious, I think they'll be cleared up as we go continue going through the videos. Okay, so now we've learned about this bond to sigma bond uh, transition. And again, the problem is that um, when you're taking a bond and uh, forming uh, a new, using it to form a new sigma bond, sometimes it's, uh, it's difficult or ambiguous to tell exactly who the new bond is being formed with. Now here it was obvious that the bond was being formed with Z. It's obvious one of the atoms that are forming the bond, but the other atom that was forming the bond was a little bit ambiguous, whether it was X or Y. 